Hello everyone, welcome to Voting Trend for August 28th. My name is Dave Trotter and today we're going to be looking at a number of polls. So we have two YouGov polls that are nationwide polls. We have an Arizona poll that came out. We have a North Carolina poll that came out. And we also have a Florida congressional poll that's going to be a big one, I think. So uh, we're going to be looking at those. And at the end of this, I am going to be doing my, what I call a gun to my head map. So basically... The idea is I'm not going to have any undecided states. I need to say, do I think the state's going to go this way or this way? Now, there's nothing scientific to it. It is just my feeling and my gut based on polling data and the electoral history, though hopefully I will be able to get some models made for some of the partisan states uh, before the voting starts to be counted. I will have my Florida model this year. I'm going to try to get models for Arizona, Nevada, and, uh, and North Carolina as well. So we'll see, and Pennsylvania maybe. So we'll see how that goes. But with this being said, let's go ahead and start looking at our first poll. And to me, it's the smallest universe, but it is the biggest shock of a result. And that is right here in Florida's 13th congressional district, where uh, Anna Paulina Luna the incumbent Republican, is actually losing to Whitney Fox, the Democrat. Uh, this was a district that was gerrymandered. I think it's a plus six on the Cook uh, political index. And it was gerrymandered in order for a Republican to win. So basically, uh, in, in, as a matter of fact, let me go over to the map right here. So if we, if we look at Florida and look at where this congressional district is, it's all of Pinellas County except for the eastern and central trunk of St. Petersburg, which they brought into Kathy Castor's district up here. So as you can see in Palm Harbor, Tarpon Springs, Oldsmar, parts of Clearwater, Dunedin, and so on, uh, it's pretty Republican uh, throughout the whole entire precinct down into Pinellas Park and along the coast here. So it is a Republican district, not a strong Republican district, but a Republican district nonetheless. Um, they have had Democrats in the past. So up in this area, there was a, a, a state representative uh, who was a Democrat maybe about eight, ten years ago. Actually, back in the 1990s, basically southern Pinellas County, for the most part, was Democratic and northern Pinellas County was more Republican. So we are seeing a big shift if this poll is correct. Now, this is done by St. Pete Polls, somebody that I know, someone who I know is reputable and actually shares their data, which is something that a lot of polling firms don't have. So very open, very transparent. And if we look at this 13th district, we see the Democrat ahead. Let's just put it this way. If the Democrats win this congressional district, they take over the House of Representatives. How close it is right now, they take over the House. There's no questions. That's what it's going to be like. But within the Congressional District, we also see Kamala Harris winning, 51 to 46. Um, and we also see Rick Scott losing by two. Now, does this have any implications as far as the rest of the state? No, not really. Pinellas County, every, a lot of the counties are different. Seminole, Orange, Osceola, and Central Florida, they're all different. Um, Palm Beach, Broward, Miami-Dade, all different. So the problems that the Democrats have in Miami-Dade are not going to be solved by the problems that are seeming to be solved in Pinellas County. So that there are a lot more pieces to this puzzle in order for the Democrats to make this a, a, a competitive state again. Okay, uh, But this is very positive for the Democrats, as I said. Look at a lot of this area. They took out this big chunk right here to go into Kathy Casters. Some of these Western Democratic precincts are still there in St. Petersburg, um, but it's mostly going to be like this. And as you can see, we're not talking about big margins. 45-54, 43-56, 47-52. So we're, we're talking about very, very close margins. And you might see Pinellas County become more blue this cycle. I think out of all the counties that made the flip the last election during the DeSantis election, Pinellas County and Osceola County are probably the ones that are more likely to flip back uh, the cycle. And Darren Soto in the 9th Congressional District better hope that's the case because 
two years from now, he could lose that seat. That could be a toss-up seat. All right, so let's go ahead and look at some of the YouGov polls. So this is the YouGov poll done for Yahoo. And as we can see, Kamala Harris is up by 1%. So it's within the margin of error. It's a tie, essentially. Uh, if we look at the distributions, they're a little bit closer, I think. So we can see the male. That looks a little closer than it should be. And same thing with the female as well. But the distribution's in the right directions. Same thing with the age. Now, I did want to mention something because I mentioned in my last video, and I want to mention this one, which is the 65 and older vote has just become so hard to pinpoint. Okay, it, it's just become absolutely difficult to pinpoint. So you'll see some polls with Kamala Harris having a lead. You'll see some where Trump has a lead. You just don't see the solidification with the 65 and older. So there's something with that universe that's bad. Um, it seems like voters 18 to 29 are starting to regularly go to the Democratic side. Back when Joe Biden was there, it, it, that voter group was just all over the place as well. But that seems to have solidified for Kamala Harris as well. Um, as far as race, that looks fine. Democrat, Republican, independent. So you see that um, independence here that Donald Trump has a 10-point lead. But... Kamala Harris is winning. So that, again, ideology, party identification, two totally different things. Now, there are two things that I did want to mention here that I did notice in this poll that I wanted to talk about, which is the first one. Of those who did not vote in 2022, 46, almost a majority, go for Donald Trump. Now, I have noticed in a lot of polls when they ask, did you vote in the 2022 election? or the 2020 election, that Donald Trump does really good with non-voters, which makes me wonder if his numbers are buoyed by non-voters. If that's the case, Kamala Harris might be winning by an extra percentage or two, right? So this is actually a pretty significant number. So I, I, I think that, with I mean, it's not too far off here, 46 to 40, but I have seen some polls, like the New York Times poll, where Donald Trump would have 50% of non-voters and Kamala Harris would like have 23. That can be a good 2 to 3% difference um, if those people don't show up, to vote, show up to vote. And a lot of these people usually don't show up to vote. So, um, yeah, that actually might be making Trump's numbers higher. Now, there's a second thing I wanted to show you as well. And this is a number that we are seeing that's new. So they ask, who do you think is going to win? Who has the best chance of winning the election? We now see Kamala Harris nationwide at 39% to Donald Trump's 36%. Okay, we, we, we didn't see this before. Right? When Joe Biden was the nominee, it was always Donald Trump significantly in the lead in this category. Now we see Kamala Harris. Now, does this necessarily mean anything? No, it doesn't, because I was doing some research uh, when I was doing my master's at McGill on voting behavior, and one of the things I wanted to test was does feeling that their uh, a voter is voting for the winner actually does that indicate their vote choice? And it doesn't. Uh, I thought that it might there might be some sort of relationship, but there really isn't a relationship. So it's just more of an interesting fact that people now see Kamala Harris as the winner. So that's that. Let's go ahead and go to the Economist poll. Uh, done by YouGov. And we're only going to just look at the horse race here. Again, we see Kamala Harris with 47% again, but Donald Trump now with 45%. Uh, again, we see the 65 and older crowd going to Donald Trump. And then we see, again, the solidification of the 18 to 29 voter. Also, Hispanic voters uh, very strong for Kamala Harris as well. And this is, there are three groups of voters that Kamala Harris has been absolutely doing an amazing job of solidifying. One, voters 18 to 29 or 18 to 34, depends on what demographic you want to look at. The second group are Hispanic voters, and the third group are moderate voters. She has been doing a really good job solidifying that. It was a little bit fluid when Joe Biden was there. Now it seems to be more solidified, as we see here. Ideology, we see Kamala Harris with 52% to Donald Trump's 36%. Then, as you can see here, 37 to 42% for party identification. Again, being a moderate doesn't mean you're an independent, and being an independent doesn't mean you're a moderate. Ask Bernie Sanders, he's an independent. Is he a moderate? No. All right. 
And then there's not much more to look at with this YouGov poll. It kind of mirrors the other poll, so there isn't much to do. But let's go over to the Arizona poll that we have here. Now, I already have this pre open to likely voters, and in this, they have likely voters in Arizona. You can see 44% for Kamala Harris, 46% for Donald Trump. So essentially, it's a tie. When you throw in the uh, margin of error, it's, this is a tie race. Okay. Uh, 18, but, but if we look at demographics, these actually look like they're a little bit more in favor of Donald Trump, which means that Kamala Harris might actually be doing better. So we look at the 18 to 34 year olds, Kamala Harris has a good gap, but she should be winning by maybe about 5% more of a gap. 35 to 44, all these look fine. Uh, see here, 65 and older, Donald Trump is up by three in that. So we can see that's trending more uh, Republican. Now, the one I found very interesting was this one, the 55 to 64. Now I figured that that number would be significantly more Republican. So I think that m this inconsistency of 47, 47 with 55 to 64 can maybe make up for the inconsistency in the 18 to 34 uh, going for Kamala or going for Kamala Harris up here. It should be a lot higher. Um, if I'm a campaign, I would rather have this 55 to 64 number, to be quite honest. Um, all the party IDs look the same. Male and female, this is where I also found it a little bit interesting because 46% of women support Kamala Harris, where 42% support Donald Trump. Now, Kamala Harris, for the most part, has been getting over 50% in this category almost in every poll. So to see her under 50% and at 46%, I think that number is a little bit off considering the male number is at 50%. And again, with Donald Trump, we're seeing the male number uh, at 50% or higher. So I think that that is, uh, that's a little bit less support than we expect for Kamala Harris. That number should be a little bit higher. Uh, as far as other numbers, let's go down to race. Uh, again, we see Kamala Harris, it's a little bit closer here, but we're seeing Kamala Harris solidify the Hispanic vote. White vote, 48 to 41, this seems about right on the most part. So the last thing I want to mention is here, the uh, geographical distribution. Now, Maricopa County being 46 for Harris, 44 for Trump, that seems spot on as to what the county should do. So that, that seems totally on. The other one is Pima County, which is to me a little bit off. So if we see it says 51% for Kamala Harris to 43% for Donald Trump. Now, if you look at the last election results, you can see 58.6 for Biden and 39.9 for Trump. So you see a significant difference in these poll numbers in Pima County and the actual election results from four years ago. This is why I think, even with the margin of error, this is actually like a legit tied race because I think that Pima County number is off. And, and like if we look at Maricopa County, you see 46, 44, 50, 48. Okay, that, 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 seems, that seems exactly where it should be. All right, so now let's go ahead and go to this North Carolina poll that we have. Now, there's not much in this North Carolina poll. Um, the questions are kind of iffy, but I figure we'd put it here anyway. Uh, we have Kamala Harris winning 46 to 50, so a four-point uh, four lead for Donald Trump. That is... I believe, a slight bit outside of the margin of error here. Um, so let's go ahead and, and look at what we have here. Gender, female, 50 to 45. Okay, at least Kamala Harris is over 50. Gap seems a little bit close considering if we look at 55 to 41 for male voters. I think that the gap for Kamala Harris among female voters is higher. This seems like an appropriate gap for Donald Trump. So... Uh, that means that Kamala Harris might be doing a lot better. Now, if we look at age 
here. This seems right. Um, Kamala Harris, 54 to 36, with 18 to 29, 30 to 44. Donald Trump, 50 44. That seems right. 45 to 64, 55 40. That seems good. Now, here we go. This is what I was talking about with the 65 and older voters. So, in this one, it shows Kamala Harris, even though it's within the margin of error, it shows Kamala Harris up 50 to 48. So, this 65 and older group is starting to be a really, really hard one to try to identify, okay? Uh, hopefully, once the debate happens on the 10th, we might be able to see a solidification of the senior vote. Otherwise, right now, it's just kind of like people are putting on blinders and throwing darts at a board. Wherever they hit, that's where the, the voters are. Um, as far as party self-identification, which I wish... Because it's North Carolina, they, they register by political party. I wish they would have done it by political party registration, but they did not. They only did it by uh, Democrat, Republican, Independent self-identifying. Uh, Kamala Harris, 88% of Democrats. Donald Trump, 90, 89% of Republicans. And then 54% of Independents to 37% for Kamala Harris. 54 for Donald Trump, 34 for Kamala Harris. Again, another problem with this poll, they don't... And, how do, you, how do you not have ideology? You know, liberal, conservative, whatever. They, they don't have that whatsoever, which I find, I kind of find, I find kind of weird, okay, especially if you're going to ask them to self-identify. If you're going to ask them to self-identify for party, why not have them self-identify as far as ideology is concerned? Because I think you would have seen uh, Kamala Harris ahead in the moderate vote. Now, black, Hispanic, other and white, I think that black number, 16%, is a little bit, high. I think it's more, I mean, but, but barely high. Um, Hispanic voters, this is one that, that kind of bucks the trend, showing uh, Kamala Harris losing the Hispanic vote, 55 to 41, which I think is kind of maybe not right, but the Hispanic vote, the number of voters there are not going to have much of an impact on the vote in North Carolina, so it doesn't really matter. Then white voters, this seems about, uh, this seems about right. Okay. Uh, so yeah, now with that being the case, let's go ahead and go over to my, as I call it, put a gun to my head uh, as far as what I think the electoral college is going to look like. Well, um, first thing I got to say is I think that Wisconsin and Michigan are, are pretty much starting to become better for the Democrats. They still need to concentrate there. They still need to focus there, but it, the question is, do Republicans focus there? Because now all of a sudden they have to defend other states. Okay, I think this becomes a little bit clearer. Now, the only thing is, I'm going to put Georgia in the Republican slot because we haven't had that much polling out of Georgia lately that I think has been really great. Uh, so we'll see what happens there. North Carolina is a hard one for me. I am currently putting it still very, very slightly for the Republicans. Though I do believe with different polling coming out. Now, that polling I showed you was a Republican-sponsored poll. If we see more by uh, the New York Times, if we see another New York Times one that shows North Carolina going Democratic, I think we put that in, the, in there. Pennsylvania, I am going slight Democratic to rebuild the blue wall. The reason why is this has more to do with the voter turnout. Uh, one thing that Barack Obama showed us is that black voter turnout uh, helps when you have a black candidate. I mean, black voter turnout was higher than white voter turnout uh, in 2008 and 2012. And I think that if we're talking about turning out voters in Philadelphia, which was where Biden really, really hurt, the last election is is yes he won he won Philadelphia County but the amount of raw votes he had coming out of there was a lot less if those voters turn out that makes Pennsylvania safe uh, Nevada is just becoming more and more Republican and we're gonna go over some voter registration numbers in a, in a video in maybe next day or two that shows how that's uh, uh, an issue and then right now and so, like I said, these are on gut feelings and knowing the electoral history and seeing the polling. I'm giving Arizona slightly to the Democrats right now. 
I, I this poll this uh, I still think North Carolina can go Democratic. Uh, the Democrats do not need Arizona in this scenario. They can lose it, and they got their two seventy. As long as they have Pennsylvania. But I think the next state to turn will be North Carolina, and I think Georgia can turn. I think Nevada is done, though. The one thing I have to say with Nevada is, even though there will be polls that show that the Republicans going to win, the Democrats always seem to eke it out. The Democrats always seem to like just get a little bit more in order to win. They, they defy the odds sometimes against the polling in Nevada, so I think that could happen. However, there's a huge discrepancy in the voter registration numbers, which I will talk about next time. But that's all for today. Thank you all very much for joining me. Make sure to subscribe. Go to my Substack and subscribe to that where I go a lot more in depth into other things as well. So thank you all very much. Have a wonderful day wherever it is you are and bye-bye.